Better shake your booties for black girl nerds. Better shake your booties for black girl nerds. Hi, Jeremy. Uh, how you doing? You know? Good, good. Well, this season, Mike is dealing with a new threat, the Russian mafia. And yeah. I wanted to know what what new challenges will Mike face this season that he quite hasn't dealt with before as mayor? Um, I think it starts with, uh, the you know, the loss of his mother. Uh, starting with that challenge and having to grieve that and what that represents, I think, in missing that matriarch, that energy in his life, uh, I think he's left with you now these new baddies that are coming to town, and here's a circle of, of life that's not, that's not living. So I think he has to make drastic changes in, in to his job title and, and um, sort of what's required of him in that job. Instead of just being a power broker, I think he has to kind of take the power. Um, and because he, he's, let, he's letting, he, he gives... Given, given these, especially new energies coming in, like you have the Russian mafia coming in, not not really playing by the rules of Kingstown, it's like it creates a real imbalance of power. So I think he creates different you know, alliances, and you know, just like uh, in the seasons past, but it's uh, higher, higher stakes this time. Definitely higher stakes, and I, I like that you mentioned imbalance of power because there's this great opening monologue that we uh, see in very first uh, episode uh, where it's talking about good and evil and yeah. restoring balance to the world. And would you say that in Kingstown that the bad people, that they're bad because of the result of their circumstances of living in Kingstown, or are there just inherently bad people and evil people in <laughs> Kingstown? I, th I think that's both, right? I mean, that's that's kind of, it's sort of, it's kind of a narrative of like, uh, you know what happens in real life, right? Or the people that are just born bad, perhaps. You know, it's hard to tell. Either way, bad's bad. So where it comes from is one thing, but um, you know. But yeah, I think environment can dictate. Like what, people always ask, like, why don't you just leave town? Why don't you just get out of town if it's so bad? I'm like, well, where do you go if you're so used to, right? For all your life, you're used to a certain thing. Like, why do people in Chicago stay there in the winter? That place is terrible. You know what I mean? It's like, just get out of there. But then, like, exactly. you know, the rest of it, it's a beautiful city. So you can't, but, you know, it's terrible, right? But, but people kind of are stuck or get complacent in a certain, because they're just used to it. Like, they don't, what are you going to do? Just drink beer in, in, in Miami? It's like, you, that's not your life. You don't know that as a life, so you don't do it. So there's an, yeah, there, there's an inherent, is there evil that comes out of it, or do you just get used or complacent to an environment? When you live in an environment like Kingstown, which actually is a real place, uh, there are real places like that all over this country, uh, where people do become complacent and living in a prison town or prison environment and where, you know, it's probably not as harrowing as the show is, but it's still like, it's p pretty bleak, you know, but people, some people choose to stay in it and some people are forced to stay in it because they're in jail, they're in prison, they're in some environment that's, or why do people stay in abusive relationships, right? That's the most infuriating thing anywhere, right? But why do people do that, right? It's, it's a, it's interesting sort of, you know, psychology of the brain that, you know, that we find comfort in, in the chaos. And, um, you know, Kingstown is a, an expression of, of that in, the, in that human condition and in, in, the, in the small world of incarceration and in a town of just incarceration. But I think just to, in humanity and, and how and why we make decisions and don't make decisions is really interesting. And I do think we, we catch, capture a lot of that. I mean, that's, that kind of behavior is always fascinating to me. And also why I like Mike, because he's the corrector of that kind of shit. He wasn't allowed, like, you, know, you want to get smashed, like, do something to a woman. <laughs> like, you know, Mike comes in and corrects that, he's, and I love that about that character. Um, it's, it's sort of superhero to me. Like, did this guy come in, you know, he, he, you see this season, he does something um, to, protect, to protect a lady that's been taken advantage of. And, um, yeah, you don't, you don't want to be on, on Mike's bad side on that. And something kind of... Uh, I don't know. I like that quality about him, man. I like that quality. I, I I love what Mike does with restoring order, and he's always at the center of chaos, but he yeah. knows how to bring things back. Yeah. Um. So I, I can't wait to see the trajectory of his story this season. And thank you so much, Jeremy, for taking the time to speak to Black Girl Nerds. I really appreciate the conversation. Yeah, yeah. My pleasure. Take care. Bye. Bye. Better 
shake your booties for black girl nerds.